Girl, the way Hallie had y'all shook and pulling y'all hair out at the thought of her being pregnant by DDG. <laughs> Girl, be calm. Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. Welcome to another King of Reese video. Hello, happy Tuesday, whatever day you are watching this. It's almost the end of the month, girl. I have some things to say and get off my chest. I've been putting out some stuff on Patreon. I definitely, girl, is it safe to say something on Patreon? <laughs> no shade. But I'm in a better mood. I am recovered from my birthday party and I have recharged my social battery and everything else. Whew, it was the fact that it was stuff going on like every day after my party. I enjoyed myself, but I'm like, girl, I gotta get back into the things. So I appreciate everybody being patient with me. I do have content, plenty of content coming out this week. Um, and also this weekend and next week, girl, I'm gonna be pushing some stuff out. I already put out about three or four videos on Patreon already because it was some stuff I had to get off of my chest. But we got to talk about Kenya Moore in her interview part two with Carlos King. We have to talk about Hallie possibly being pregnant, even though she posted a picture and maybe she is, maybe she's not. Who, who knows? We also have to send a special shout out to our girl Shakari Richardson, who won the 100 meter women's race, period. She ate that, loved that for her. Uh, Cause that's the way the girls were trying to count her out. But yes, we have that and a couple of other things to talk about in this King Reese video. But before we get into any of that, let's go ahead and get to this mental health check-in. Mental health is doing way better this week. I've gotten some things off my chest. I've expressed some stuff and it's the way I have an appointment to my therapist tomorrow. And I can't wait to talk about some of the things that's been going on cause baby, it's been an interesting month for me. So I talked about one of my experiences on Patreon and just asking for feedback on folks and how they would react and was I wrong? And I appreciate all the patrons who, who commented and said, no child, you was completely honest and shared their stories of being in a similar situation. So I definitely appreciate y'all um, for doing that. So I'm in a better space this week and I'm thankful for that. Um, and my, my social battery is recharged, charged up, period. And I'm just ready to push out content and flesh out ideas and things I've been thinking about and get some thoughts out on some stuff I've been thinking about. So that's it, nothing too heavy. I appreciate you all. I'm still on a high from seeing Beyonce. Um, what was that, like a week ago? Was it a week ago? Yeah, it was a week ago. Seeing Beyonce, it was amazing. Still high, still levitating off of that um and just listening to renaissance again so girl i i want your love i want your feel period but let's go ahead and get to the tea for today the tea for today is there is a fly in here and girl like <laughs> if i catch it while i'm recording this video girl do not make fun of me because i can't stand a fly like i cannot I can't do it. Honestly, the flies are coming from my friend put the trash in the recycle trash can instead of the garbage can outside. And I was full. I was like, why does it smell like this? Like, what's that? What's that smell? Like, y'all know my nose is strong. So I kept thinking, like, I'm smelling food. Like, I'm smelling, I don't know what it is. It wasn't bad. But then I said, girl, this stuff is in the recycle thing. This is recycle. This is recycle. So I, can't, I I'm about to tell him because I, I actually just caught it. So that's probably what the fly is. But y'all ain't here for no fly. Y'all here for the tea. And the way I would love to be a fly on the wall to see if Hallie is pregnant or not. So people have been speculating that Hallie was pregnant. There was a video of her walking by while DDG was on live. And she looked like she was holding her stomach. She looked like she had a little bit of a stomach, whatever. Then there was a picture of her at the Beyonce concert in Atlanta. And she had on the big shirt. Uh, and normally like, you know, when foes are pregnant, normally they'll wear big stuff to cover up their stomachs and all the other stuff. So people were speculating, oh girl, she's like, she's definitely pregnant. So she recently just posted a picture of her and her sister um, and she had her on some little, you know, some outfit and her stomach was out and it looked flatter. Um, I will say that one of the pictures I looked at, I couldn't tell if it was like doctored or like, you know, photoshopped a little bit, but it did look very, very pixelated in a specific section. I am not on the hunt to find out if she is pregnant. I really don't think it's our business. Uh, I, uh, I guess the only thing for me is just to know that I ain't like 
seeing things, but I really just don't care. Like, I'm like, eh, this picture looks like his Photoshop, but it might be just me questioning everything. That's the only reason, but I don't care if she is by DDG or not. Like, if that girl, like, that girl's not leaving that man, obviously he's a different person online than he is in person, and maybe she likes this. But Holly is very young, and maybe, like, you know, maybe this is all a play. Maybe they're just doing this. I don't know. All I know is that we are too hyper fixated on this woman's uterus and her relationship and I feel like folks just need to let it go. Like they want better for Hallie, they want her to find a better partner or whatever and because he talks about her like bad or says some stuff, but we don't know these people. I think we really have to realize that we do not know these people. Yes, he, he you know has been saying some questionable stuff online and kind of embarrassing her, but like like, girl, I, I don't like, she's not going anywhere and she keeps pushing back. Like, she ain't going anywhere. She She's happy and it's good. Um, it, whatever it is, you know, they love it on each other. So that's all that matters. So if she is pregnant, congratulations to her. But if she's not pregnant, congratulations as well. Because, baby, the way this economy is set up, child, please. Okay? But I just thought that was interesting because the, the folks been talking about it for a minute. They've been talking about it. <laughs> but I think she would look so cute pregnant, though. She would look so cute. But the girl was saying her nose is spread. I don't know. I said, girl, she could be just gaining weight. Like, hello? Be calm until she makes an announcement. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, because a lot of times folks have speculated and, and, you know, come to find out it was true. I think the only person that was, like, really, really wrong was Rihanna. I think the Rihanna was the only one that the girls was, like, wrong, wrong, wrong about. But everybody else, I remember we speculated about Cardi B. You know, Cardi was doing the same thing, and I was like, oh, no, she was like, she's not pregnant, but she was pregnant. She did a reveal on the Saturday Night Live, period. She did it, and that was iconic. That was, that was iconic. Was that, did she reveal on Saturday Night Live? I think she did during the performance. So, that was cute. Um, yeah, DDG and Hallie, yeah, they're not going to work. It's her name, yeah, her name is Hallie, because you know I'll be getting them confused. Chloe and Hallie singing these songs, period. Um, let's talk about, <sighs> let's talk about this, let's talk about other baby daddy situations, uh, <laughs> since we own that. Kiki Palmer and um, whatever their boy name is, uh, apparently have split. They're not together. Apparently, he's you know named it and said it. Um, Kiki Palmer recently did a music video with um, Usher, and I thought that was iconic and it was fun and it was cute. Um, the song was cute. Um, I haven't played it about like once or twice, but I think Kiki Palmer is a fun person, um, and I don't think it's nothing wrong with her like having a little fun and, and playing off and, and just say I am a mother. Like, of course Kiki Palmer is going to do that. Of course she's like, but the gag is, of course she's going to key and laugh about it because it's nothing serious. Now, I just hate that, I, like, that one situation blew up so bad that they, apparently, I wonder if they split up for that or was it other stuff? Because I wonder, folks, if you embarrass me online, something like that, girl, knowing how I move and how, like, like social media plays into like my career, for you to embarrass me like that, girl, I would be pissed. I would be pissed. And he was doing the most, uh, and you know, Kiki followed up doing the song with Usher, as she should. The girl said Kiki didn't push it far enough, she should have sat on Usher's face. And to that, I say I agree. <laughs> but the way Usher Raymond is ending his residency in Las Vegas, uh, I think his last date is December the 2nd. When I tell you, I want to go to the November 29th show so bad. I was looking at tickets. The tickets are not horrible. They're not horrible, especially if you're getting closer and closer. They're not bad. They are expensive, but they're not bad for you to be close up. It's the way that I want a ticket bad. I want a ticket. I'm trying, y'all, but y'all might, I might have to go. Like, I might have to go because that's something I've been wanting to do for a while. That'll complete my roster. It's the way I might sell my Doja Cat tickets and then and, and, and go. See, Usher, I'm so sorry. Like, I might have to combine them two tickets, sell it, and take that money and go see Usher. Like, I, cause you know, I don't know what my girl Doja doing out here, but she she a little risky. She a little risk. She a risk taker. <laughs> uh, just give it a risk taker. Uh, and I don't know if I don't know if it's worth the risk for me, especially after she been talking to to the girls online and stuff. Like, girl. 
you ain't a fan of these folks. They don't know you. You don't know them. Just leave it alone. Like, why are you arguing back and forth with them? Like, you don't know them. They don't know you. Just move on about your business. Hello? But yeah, I want to go see Usher. But Kiki Palmer doing that video of Usher was really, really cute. Funny, fun, all of that. Love that for them. Moving on swiftly and professionally. Shakari, the fastest woman on earth. Period. Did y'all see that video? Whole girl was like, girl, this the way that y'all ain't never, the US ain't never won a gold medal. Shakari said, cause of you, cause of you. Oh, uh, it was a cute moment, but y'all gonna run it into the ground. Y'all black excellent girls, y'all finna frame it on, on y'all walls and on shirts and stuff. And I'm just like, girl, be calm. This is just a moment with these and they just fun. But everything ain't got to be this viral sensation moment. It's just like cute, we acknowledge it, we love it, but the way folks be trying to extrapolate everything from it, instead of just letting the moment be organic and fun. But I love that for Shakari. I love that for her. Because the girls was counting her out. They were counting her out for a minute. You know, saying she was ghetto, she was unprofessional, she was doing some stuff. She's young, she's young. And um, she is allowed to make mistakes and, and, and do things, but it's the way she's been out here proving herself. Um, and I hate that she has to quote unquote prove herself like to win these things to prove herself because she's always already a, you're a winner, baby You're a winner You're a winner All I'm hearing is you're a winner, baby. Come on drag race, but yeah um, Shikari shout out to you girl shout out to you um, All the things I think have questions like when it comes to J Jamaicans like they've been winning these gold medals in, in these like at these um, Events and stuff for running why is that? Like, why are Jamaicans so good at, like, track? Like, what is that? Like, what is it just like, because that's a, like an ultimate sport in Jamaica or something? Like, I'm very curious of that. Very, very curious of, um, of, of the things with that. Um, maybe it's like, it's just like a very, very big sport for them. Maybe I should do some research. Y'all tell me. Where my Jamaicans at? Show up. Tell me what's it giving. We call Sonya. Sonya! I don't have a Jamaican accent. So let me not be disrespectful, period. But shout out to Shakari Richardson, period. Love your braid. And I love homegirl here at the yellow wig next to her, period. Loved it. Let's talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta. Kenya Moore did part two of her interview with Carlos King, and I watched it. Um, I watched it because I didn't have anything else to do, and I was like, I want something in the background playing. And I listened. Uh, it's the way he was watching me, that then I watched it, and then I, yeah. So, I want to drag it because I'm watching this interview and I'm like, Kenya, Kenya, please. Like, Kenya, please. Kenya was doing the ultimate most on this interview. Carlos King, as much as I care for him and what he's done for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Carlos King is not an interviewer. He is not asking the tough questions. He is not holding them to task. Not saying it has to be a Barbara Walters interview, but it's just... It's just a kiki session. I wouldn't say that this is an interview. This is just, they come on here and they air their grievances out on the ladies and Real Housewives of Atlanta. That's it. Production. Like, none of them are really, like, Nini talked about some stuff, but they're not really, we're not getting in-depth too much with them because they're just going off about things that have happened on the show and how they feel about this and that. And I get that's why we're watching and stuff, but it's just no way... And nowhere did I see Kenya be held accountable and questioned for some of the things that she said. Like, she was able to say some stuff and move without any other question. And like, hey, and no type of pushback. And that's not, you know, you know, he just, it was just a podcast episode to me. Um, and it's funny watching Kenya, like, say the production is at fault and all this other stuff. And, you know, the fans... Uh, want to see this, but the fans also wanted to see um, Homegirl with the peach, and that didn't do well. So, Kenya, on one hand, is saying, like, listen to the fans. The fans want this, and then the second, like, oh, don't listen to the fans because the fans don't know what they want. And I agree. The fans don't know what they want. The fans don't know what they want. The fans are going off what they think they want. And they're not privy to what Bravo is doing as far as budget, what they can put, uh, what they can film, what they can get out, and what the girls are going to react to. I don't think for a second 
that a lot of us were interested in seeing Kenya in this spa. Like, I guarantee you, it's the way that Bravo probably made an executive decision and said, hey, we ain't finna, like, edit this whole, like, scene and it's only gonna produce, like, five minutes or something. It's not gonna be really good. Sheree's baby shower produced some real good stuff. We got that moment with Bob and the daughter. Like, that was a moment. Seeing, like, um, Sheree become a grandmother seeing her family, all of that was cute. The event was cute, her house, like it just, it was it was good. Uh, I just don't think we're just interested in Kenya and her like spa thing like that. I just don't, when you have to make decisions like that in production to save money because the budget is tight, yeah, like cut it. Like yes, you know, she shot it with everybody, but Bravo does not have the budget that they once did because they are not bringing in the ratings which they used to. Bravo is not bringing in the same ratings, which means they're not making the same amount of money they did a couple years ago, which means they have a tighter budget. So we've been able, I don't know, it's like y'all be thinking I'm, I'm, I'm bullshit because I, like, I don't like the ladies or whatever, but they don't have the budget to do the things that they once did. They're not going to waste any money it, like, like on that. They have to trim the fat. And that means axing some of this stuff out. Like, as much as y'all want to pretend, like, oh, the ratings are okay, they are not doing well. If it's costing this much money to produce the show and we are not bringing in the money to make a profit off of it, we're going to have to cut some of the stuff. And with them cutting it, it's kind of like a circle of stuff because they're cutting stuff and they're, like, changing stuff up. It, drip, it, it dips even more because now it's unwatchable. Which is why you have that happening on season 15 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. The budget, cheaper, less stuff being filmed, uh, production being worked extra, extra hard, and it's falling apart. The house is falling apart. Nobody wants to be there. Kenya Moore talked about that she doesn't want to, you know, work with Courtney or whatever because Courtney is thirsty to be on there. Every housewife that has been on there since season five has always been thirsty about potentially being a full-time housewife, moving from friend of the show to housewife. All of them have done it. Kenya, you did it too. You were super turned. You did your stuff. Like, I don't get it. None of these girls are not going to be interviewing and working for, like, to doing all this work to be on the show. Like, girl, they're not doing that no more because they don't have the money. It's not making that type of money no more. So, no, I'm not going to be working, working hard, and then by the time I've been and got on the damn show, the check ain't even what I thought it was going to be. So, no, they're not going to do that. They not, ain't nobody going to do that right now. Like, y'all are close like, to getting rebooted or, like, completely canceled. Like, it's coming. It's only a matter of time at this point. It's only a matter of time before it just gets canceled. Like, there's no way that Real Housewives Island can continue like this for the next couple of years. It's just not possible. It's not possible. It's so bad that Peacock is putting the episodes online the day after. Like, they're not even putting them on Monday. They put them up Tuesday because they want people to watch it. They want people to watch it on TV. They want folks to do it. They don't want folks streaming it. They do not want us streaming it. They're not pushing the streaming like that because they're not making as much money as they did. And the nerve of Kenya to talk about manufactured storylines when we've seen Walter the crazy snapper head turtle dude and this kill me crazy dude all manufactured guys that we knew you was not dating for real for real all of it this divorce that you've been dragging out for the last couple of years like girl there's so many things that you are doing that is manufactured none of this stuff is organic anymore none of it and none of y'all are taking accountability yes production is messing up doing some stuff but y'all ain't offering nothing y'all ain't even offering anything Candy barely here she's here when she wants to be here we don't care about Candy building no businesses no more. We don't, like, we bored. Like, the girls are saying that. Like, the girls is like, we don't care about Candy. Y'all think folks just make stuff up. The girls do not care about Candy and her storyline like that no more. Candy works well with others, but she's not bringing it. There is no anchor on the show. Kenya, you're not the anchor of the show. You're not moving like that. So, you like, y'all trying to have y'all stuff on a pedestal. None of y'all girls are eating. None of y'all are eating. None of y'all. And I like y'all doing this cute little interview with Carlos King. We won't be talking about this shit three months from now. Like we talking about it right now. Like right now.
But there's no interest. Like, we are bored. And I think it's none of y'all really y'all fault, to be honest. It's just we are burnt out on reality TV. Look at the same thing that's happened with Love & Hip Hop. Like, look at all. They have to take 20 people from all across the cast, from, from all other franchises to put in one to make people interest because it's not moving us like that no more. We're not watching. A lot of us are not watching the reviews. We're not, we're not watching the show. We just are bored. Y'all have done everything. So maybe Sweet 16 needs to be like a, 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 a reset. Maybe have some moments, come back, and then redo it with season 17 with a whole new cast of people. Maybe have that. But like the, I, I think the perfect cast does include Phaedra. The fact that, you know, everybody says it's not possible because of Candy, then let Candy ass go, to be honest. Like, let Candy, let Candy go. Like, Candy is sweet, love her down, give her a spinoff. Do, let her do something else and see if it makes it or if it does it. Probably won't make it. But we, like, Candy is not that important. I think Bravo is kind of learning, like, Candy is not really that important. Candy is not that important. Like, none of y'all really hold the key to making folks continue to watch the show. It's the way the ratings were dipping when Nene was on it. Like, the ratings were still okay when Kenya left. Like, when Kenya came back, when, like, it's just, there was no boost. None of y'all have the actual big fan base to watch the show like y'all think y'all do. I think that's where it's coming at. Y'all don't have it. Y'all are literally fooled by looking at tweets and looking at followers that y'all have on social media and stuff. But the girls are not watching y'all. And it's the fact that I know that because they are DMing us creators who are reviewing this show and saying, girl, I don't even watch this episode. I just look at the clips online and I just watch a review. They're not interested. It used to be after a big moment happened on Housewives of Atlanta or something, the reviews will be like up. Nobody's watching it because the show is gone. She's dead and it's time to lay her on to rest. Like we dragging it out and she's just not doing well. She's not doing that much numbers. So why would Bravo truly original waste their time? Like y'all dragging production in and out and these women are just not giving it. Say what you want about Marlo. Marlo has been having me keying. She's been getting on my nerves, all this stuff, but Marlo has been having me keying. And I believe her relationship with Scotland before I believe Kenya's relationship with Kale Me Crazy. Also, yes, Marlo did use the drop the F-bomb with referring to a queer person on the show. Yes, messed up. I don't think, you know, has Marlo ever apologized and acknowledged that? She probably didn't. It's messed up. All of y'all have been homophobic on this show, to be honest. Kenya, you've been transphobic. You said, I was watching season six. You had told homegirl um, that, you know, did she talk? Like, she looked like a man. All of y'all have been trash on this show. All of y'all have been homophobic. Nene calling your friend Brandon that was homophobic, saying the queen and all the other stuff. All of y'all have. Except, I never heard Candy say anything. I never heard Candy or Cynthia. Never seen neither one, but all of y'all have some way, shape, or form participating in it. But I've not seen it with Candy or Cynthia, to be honest. But all of y'all, uh, you know, have done some stuff that's been very questionable to try to paint Marlo as this big, big villain. It's giving obsessed, Kenya. It's giving that sister. It's giving obsessed. You're mad. You're thinking, why is production giving? Why is production giving Marlo? Because Marlo is actually entertaining. <laughs> I think Kenya cannot understand that. Like, she's ruining the show. The girl said that about you, too. Like, how you were moving and how you was doing the theatrics and stuff with the face door lines. They said that you introduced that. They're saying that you introduced that. And you did. You did. So they're following what you have brought. So, yes, you drag Marlo, all the other stuff, but I feel like Marlo actually is entertaining. The moments that I remember on this season were Marlo doing silly stuff. Like Marlo being, like calling it out. Da, da, da. Say what you want, but it's entertaining. It's entertaining. So it's just like, oh, Courtney is, I'm too good to be arguing with Courtney because she's thirsty. Girl, you better be putting your ass to work because the show is falling apart. You ain't got time to talk about you ain't finna argue with Courtney. The damn show has been talked about being rebooted because y'all ain't bringing shit. You don't have the, the, you got the nerve to sit up here and say, oh, I'm too good. Y'all ass is about to be jobless, to be honest, because y'all head is too far up y'all ass. Y'all really think y'all irreplaceable and Bravo about to show y'all and I'm gonna be laughing my ass off completely. 
But that's all I got, because <laughs> I'm, I'm dragging it. Real Housewives Atlanta is responsible for my viewership and my audience because I was reviewing the show and I was getting a lot of people watching me. So just to see how the show is falling apart and how folks are just not committed to doing the work while also complaining, it's really sad and, and tacky, to be honest. But that's all I got. Um, tell me what y'all thought about the interview that Kenya Moore did with Carlos King. Let me know what y'all thought about my video and all the things I've talked about. And until next time, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.